All right, good morning and welcome to Wednesday Morning Live. So we're going to jump right into a topic that is exactly what we talked about Sunday. Sunday we started a new series focused on winning the battle in your mind and really declaring war on the lies that have taken up room in our heads. And uh, so we're going to jump right in. We're going to talk about some of the passages in Romans 8. I hope you've been reading Romans 8 every morning. That's kind of one of our challenges as we start this series. Um, And we're going to talk about some tips, some ways we can get more out of it. But right off, um, a couple of questions we want to talk about. Why is it important for us to really deal with the lies? What are some of the lies? Let's start there. What are some of the lies that the enemy tries to put into our head that we're trying to root out with Romans chapter 8 or in general by declaring war on taking back our minds? What are some of those lies? What do they look like? Not, not good enough. Yep. You know, not, not having all the answers, not being able to no one will listen to you. defend. Right. You, you shouldn't yeah. speak up until you know everything. So yep. you, just, you just keep your mouth shut. Yeah. What mm-hmm. are some lies that maybe Satan... Well, ditto to what he says. Uh, the biggest lie is that I don't know enough. That's right. And don't, can't really rely on the Holy Spirit to give me the right words. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really what it comes down to. Do that. I'm not yeah. bold enough to trust that God will provide me an right. answer or the right response. Correct. And so I'll just spend my whole life afraid to speak up or afraid to really allow God to use me. And, and there's, there's lies like from the enemy, but then there's lies we tell ourselves, right? Like we just convince ourselves that, man, I, not only is the enemy say that about me, but I believe that. Yeah. I'm no better than my worst moment. I'm no better than the sins that I've committed and I could never be forgiven. Or mm-hmm. uh, I, I mentioned it on Sunday. And I was talking in my men's group last night. We were discussing some of these same topics. We were talking about really taking hold of our thought life. It was where our, our Bible study plan took us. And a lot of the guys talked about how you can be distracted, not even by bad things or good things, just by guilt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can do something and then for weeks, all, every time you want to do something for God or every time you want to draw closer to the Lord, it's almost like Satan reminds you, oh man, God doesn't want to talk to you. Yeah. Remember mm-hmm. what you said? Yeah, nothing more than Satan wants than for you to be your biggest critic. That's you know, right. Let me critique myself. Let me find the, the areas that I'm, I'm weak in yep. mm-hmm. rather than saying that God can overcome my weaknesses. That's right. Correct. We will focus on our, our weaknesses and we'll critique ourselves. And it'll rob you of a week and then a month. And before you know it, you've spent a whole year just determined in your head that you're no good, that God can't use mm-hmm. you. And that is never how Christ intended us to live. And that's really why Romans chapter 7 is so like almost discouraging. Paul says, woe is me. But then Romans chapter 8 is so encouraging. Mm-hmm. He says right. but there is no condemnation for those who, not those who've done this much or haven't done this, but those who are in Christ. That's all of us. Mm-hmm. There's no amount of good we can do to undo the sins we've committed. Um, so, any other lies before we move on that you guys can think of uh, that maybe Satan or we tell ourselves as it relates to maybe lies in our head, common lies that well, people believe? Well, the main one for me is I'm too old. New technology oh, okay. is taken over, yeah. so I'm not qualified to serve because that's, I don't know as much out there. That's really good. Uh, and relate to others. And on the flip side, you know what Satan tells yeah. me sometimes? You're too young. Mm-hmm. If people want a more seasoned pastor. You shouldn't speak to that right. until you're a little older and wiser. And then when we get older exactly. and wiser, what do we say? Oh, oh, well, they want somebody younger and hipper. Satan yeah. loves using the same lie against us exactly. in this season he's and then that him. season. And obviously, I'm right in the middle of you Yeah, guys, so yeah, I'm he's a, way I'm older than me. Age. I'm in the perfect <laughs> yeah. age. And we have the middle of the world. Everything's great. And <laughs> yeah. No problems. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think another lie that, that I really have fallen victim to is that there's this perception that everyone else seems to have it together. All these other Mm -hmm. pastors, man, they don't make the mistakes that I make, or all these other husbands, they seem to have their act together. And so when the lie becomes maybe not necessarily about you, but about others, you believe like, man, they have really, I'm the only one that is as jacked up and messed up as I, and that's another lie, but from a different angle. And when those lies get in, man, it's hard to un- unpack them. Yeah, it's to compare ourselves. I was thinking about that same thing. It's compare ourselves to others, but it's both ways. You know, we compare ourselves and we don't measure up to what somebody else is. But all, a lot of times we compare ourselves and say, well, at least I'm doing better than them. Right. And so I'll find someone at the very top be like, oh. Yeah. And then I'll be like, well, at least I'm not better right. than that so, guy. So I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, and if they knew that I did that, boy, I don't know if they'd like me What is anymore. that that you did? Well, I'll Share with tell. us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> so, so the lies are there. They're constantly there. And by the way, I'm confronted by them most often when I'm on social media because that's often when I feel like I don't compare to the people I do see 
-hmm. or, or I'm like, man, I can't believe how they've got it together. Um, why is it so important, and why, is we have, why have we as a church determined to combat these lies with the truth of Scripture? I didn't say, why is it important to combat these lies? We know that. Why is it important to combat these lies with Scripture specifically like we're attempting to this week? No, because Scripture is truth. I mean, we have to believe mm. that Scripture is truth and that when God says, like in Psalm 139, that he created us and he loves us just the way we are, right. we have to believe that mm -hmm. and not believe the lie that, oh, man, you know, they're never going to like me because... Right. Of the way I dress or right. talk or whatever. Yeah, God loves us. He loves us too much to leave us the way that we are, but mm -hmm. he loves us and yet offers salvation and forgiveness regardless of who we are or what we've done. And that's where transformation begins. And so mm -hmm. none of us, none of us woke up and were just perfect and ready for salvation. Mm -hmm. We came as we are, whatever mm -hmm. we were wearing, whatever we were doing at that time. Correct. And then over the course of time, Jesus does begin to change how we talk to people, mm -hmm. how we communicate or the language we use or the actions, you know, that we allow in our life. Um, we have to believe it's a heart change. That, that's right. Not it doesn't out start on the outside. Outside, physical change. And that's what we're talking about here. A whole bunch of Christians have tried to start from the outside in, and we're talking about starting from the inside out and really beginning the battle in your mind. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin, anything else you want to add to that, like why it's so important to combat it with Scripture specifically? Uh, I think it's easily, you're, you know, you put in the weapons the enemy uses, but distractions, you know, it's so easy to, if you don't combat it with, with Scripture, it's easy to become distracted by the, 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 the ways you're trying to combat it. You, you can become distracted by, by being so busy that you're doing good work, yeah. you're doing good things, um, by giving, by helping others, by... Trying you, to earn... Will, right, yeah, and, and you will, it will become a distraction when, when the Bible's very clear. It's not about what we do. And Paul even says, it's, I, 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 God had puts this in my life so I don't boast about right. these mm -hmm. things. It's if I do it in my own power... I wouldn't need it's, God. Right. It's meant to force us to depend on Him. And so that's where Scripture is just huge. And yeah. Scripture is written for all of us, not just for the philosopher, not right. just for the smartest people out there. I think another lie is if I just read Christian books, mm. you know, about Christian women or whatever, and never really check it out to see if that right. book is actually scriptural. Mm. You know, or just listening to someone. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh, well, Mark said that, so it's yeah. got to be true. Yeah, so know? we fill our mind with Christian stuff and never actually get into the Word. Right. Like, this is, I love listening to sermons. I love reading Christian authors. Mm -hmm. But Christian sermons, authors, pastors, leaders, we make mistakes too. And sometimes, sometimes exactly. we say stuff that isn't truth. And so we have to combat these lies mm -hmm with the most true thing we have, and that is mm -hmm. Scripture. And so our challenge this week has been to go through Romans chapter 8, and we're just going to hit on a couple things here. And when I, when I opened Romans chapter 8 this week to preach from it, I had some notes already in there because it's a passage that Christians, I mean, it's just full of good, encouraging little nuggets. So mm -hmm. I've got some that I've highlighted. I'd, I'd love to hear some from you guys. What are some of the passages in Romans chapter 8? So what's a verse or a little phrase in there that you noticed this week or that have stood out to you as you've been reading through Romans chapter 8? Well, I, the obvious one is there's no condemnation. Yeah, it starts strong. Yes. That's and good. I like that. I mean, and he says there is none. No, you know, not, well, there's some. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I like that. I like the positive that there is no condemnation. One that I noticed, um, I, I kind of highlighted it here. It says in verse 15, you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but mm -hmm. you have received the spirit of adoption. Right. Back then, there were a lot of servants and even slaves, and, and Paul encouraged this in the New Testament church. He encouraged them not just to treat their slaves well, but to free their slaves and to adopt their slaves. And what that meant was a slave would become an heir in the household and actually receive not just wages for his work and not just a little bit, but he would become an heir with that man's sons. Mm -hmm. And to Paul, this was a beautiful illustration of how we, mm -hmm. as slaves to sin, in the body of Christ, become this beautiful, adopted 
son, daughter of the Lord. So that one stood out to me, and I think a lot of us, we, we tend to feel like we're slaves falling back into fear. He said, no, spirit of adoption is sons to, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. It was personal yeah. to cry out to God as Father. Right. What you got, Kevin? Yeah, and I was, that same verse stood out to me, and I, I heard something this week on the radio about uh, an individual who has to, when he comes to his heavenly Father, Abba, Father, he has to uh, separate himself from his earthly father because his earthly father did not give him that father figure yeah, that he right. needed. Yeah. And, and so this verse really stood out to me after hearing that because it's just a reminder, many of us did not grow up with fathers. Yeah. Many mm -hmm. of us did not grow up with loving fathers, fathers of, of, of a good example. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there is a separation there. This is not the same uh, here one one birthday, gone the next. Yeah. Father, this is a father that loves us, cares about us, is there for us regardless. That's good. Mm -hmm. And so that father thing just really stood out to me. You know, it's something that I want to have as my family. I want to be the father I need to be. And I know that's right. your, your goal. And I would hope every dad watching this, yeah, our goal is to be the father and the moms mm -hmm. that we need to be, the and, love and the support. And when we are, we would hope that that points our children to Jesus, right. to the mm -hmm. Lord. Um, another one I noticed was verse 18. He said, I consider that the sufferings of this present time, again, writing to people who are being persecuted, mm -hmm. aren't even worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. I mean, the hope in that, like, hey, guys, this is bad. It is only going to be that much better in heaven. Anybody mm -hmm. else have another one? If not, I'm going to jump right to my favorite one because he kind of chases that thought and says, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. He mm -hmm. says, what, what, what is there? Mm -hmm. Who could separate us from this love um, down at the end of the passage? He didn't spare his own son. Uh, who is to condemn? How can they separate? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword. He says, man, nothing can separate us. Mm -hmm. from... So even our own lies, even our own dysfunctional lives mm -hmm. can't separate. Like That's the beauty of being in Christ and yeah. having faith. Well, and I think that also goes back to, I love the word adoption. Yes. Because adoption, to me, means I was chosen. That's exactly right. If you adopt a child, you choose right. that. It's not yeah. that you just kind of fell into your circumstances. He chose me. And then it goes into, there's nothing that can separate that. That's right. You're, you're you adopted know? now. You're, you're exactly. in. Exactly. There's a piece of paper signed, but right. he chose me. It's yeah. good. One of the things we're encouraging you guys to do is to consider as you go through, you're about three mornings in, maybe read Romans chapter 8 this morning from a different translation. And so exactly. whether it's the CEV, the ESV, the NKJV, the YLT, I mean, there's all these translations. And I listed some in our Facebook group. I'd encourage you guys to read it mm -hmm. and just really marinate on this truth of, man, there is hope, there is joy, there is freedom. We are, we are not separated from God. We, it is just one of those truths we need to really allow to settle into our mind. And as we move through this series, we got to declare, like, I'm taking my mind back. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Anything else you guys would add to this exercise this week, this spiritual discipline, this habit we are forming? Anything you would I mention? think every time you do read it, the Lord gives you something else that That's jumps right. out at you. Yeah, you were kind of which fate, is what yeah. I like. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't. It's not like reading a a, a regular book. Right. It, God talks to you through it, That's and right. depending upon how your day starts, uh, he he makes it personal. That's right. To you, mm -hmm. you know. So maybe the adoption one was. For Tuesday, it really kind of right. struck you. But then again, maybe the verse about, hey, nothing, yeah. nothing can separate. You know, so he gives you all these different little nuggets. Yeah. It'll be interesting in the to same see thing. what speaks to you on certain days. Like if Thursday is going to be hard and that morning you really focused exactly. on the hope or yeah. the, the lack of fear that we're called to. Yeah. Anything you'd add, Kevin, before we sign off? Yeah, verse 28. I mean, it's probably one of the most common yeah, verses that's when right. it comes Skip to Christianity. Yeah, that's right. Skip right over it. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Um, and if we're not careful, this is a name it and claim it. You know, yeah. this is me. Mm -hmm. This is me. I, I love God, and so everything's going to be great. It's going to work it's, out. I don't need. Yeah, and, and working out the way that we want it to is not often what's going to happen. Right. Exactly. It's going to work out. It's going to be good 
not our version. But you're going to be able to help others. Yeah. And, you know, we're talking mm-hmm. about adoption here, and we have a family that's been attending for the past couple of months now, and they adopted several children. Uh, they had their own, but they adopted several children, and now they help others who are going through that adoption mm-hmm. phase. And uh, the lives that they've been able to impact uh, is is just incredible. But the the dad even told me. This wasn't what I had set out to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't my our plan. It wasn't it was something that we felt called to do because of the life that we had come through. And the thing is they have helped so many people, so mm-hmm. many families, so mm-hmm. many children that mm-hmm. they adopted and they they will be forever life changed and there are things that we go through that God is is preparing us to be able to help others. Yeah. Exactly. Expanding our our ministry, yeah. expanding our territory, as yeah. Sue exactly. talked about last Wednesday. Man, don't yeah. pick on my topic with yeah, your sorry, topic. Yeah, sorry, don't let me, don't let me sneak, here. sneak yours back in. All right, y'all, we love you, and we hope yes, you are reading do. through Romans 8. We hope Romans you are 8. declaring war for your mind. We want to see exactly. you not just freed so you feel better. We believe that when we are battling for our mind, it's so that we can be freed to do what God is calling us to do, to mm-hmm. serve, to make a difference, to actually allow God to use us yeah. to make more of an impact in his kingdom, yeah. whether it's in kids' ministry or inviting neighbors to church. A bunch of us, when we get victory in here, it is going to lead to victories in our families, oh, our relationships, bet. our communities, the, our surround, the people who look to us every day are going to be blown away with the difference when we can get freedom up here yep. and exactly. then start saying and doing what God has always called us to do. And you'll do it. Joyfully, that's right. Because you want to, that's right. Not because you have to. That's good. In order to do anything, that's good. All right, y'all. Let us know yep. your favorite verse, a verse that stuck out to you in the comments mm-hmm. below. Otherwise, we'll see you next Wednesday. Keep reading through Romans chapter eight. Have a great yep. rest of your Wednesday. See you guys. Awesome. Bye bye.